time is 6.02 p.m. This is December 12, 2022, and this is the Board of Trustees special meeting. So as uh, per usual, uh, we should uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So before we begin any uh, swearing in or any congratulations, I will uh, uh, do the honors and I will uh, read this uh, first resolution, unless Andrew, you have any other suggestions here, but uh, I, will, uh, I will get going. So the first resolution tonight, uh, this is to uh, appoint our acting chief, who's done an outstanding job in her role, uh, and who is currently Lieutenant Herzog. Our goal is to promote her to captain uh, to this evening, so I will read the resolution. Whereas Suzanne Hertel has served the village of Southampton with distinction, holding the positions of police officer, sergeant, and lieutenant, and whereas Lieutenant Hertel has also served as acting chief of the department, and whereas Lieutenant Hertel placed first on the current civil service list for the position of police captain, promotional, now therefore be it resolved that Suzanne Hertel is promoted to the position of police captain, effective December 12, 2022, subject to the successful completion of a probationary period established for that position by the County of Suffolk. And be it further resolved that Captain Hertel shall be compensated with an annual salary of $197,229.43. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So thank you very much. Congratulations. Captain Hertel and Acting Chief Hertel, would you like to come up either to uh, say a few words or to, uh, or for us to congratulate, whatever you like. And then on top of that, we'll have our village clerk, clerk Kathy Sweeney, uh, swear you in. Congratulations. Keep it very brief. I just really want to thank my officers in the police department for the last 14 months working together and getting through each day. Uh, you guys and gals have done an amazing job to make me look good. Um, and I wouldn't be here without you. And you. And all of you. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I hope that each of you, um, as officers, as human beings, and members of the community embrace our new chief, welcome him to the department, and the community um, that embraced me when I was a young kid starting out, please embrace him and uh, you know just welcome him the way you welcome me. Thank you. Microphone, so we have some. We can sound. go in the. Do you want right to go here, right here? It's fine. Do you want us to go right in the middle? Right here, it's fine. Okay, you can you. even bring it over a little bit. You can just bring this. Yeah, that, that's, that's as far as it's going to go. Would you like to hold the Bible? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. This is such a proud evening for all of us. Um, on behalf of the state of New York, the county of Suffolk, the village of Southampton, I, Suzanne Hertel, I, Suzanne Hertel, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of New York, the Constitution of the state of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties 
and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of Captain of the Southampton Village Police Department of Captain of the Southampton Village Police Department according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words. Uh, uh, now Captain Hertel and Acting Chief, uh, in my opinion, has done an outstanding job. Uh, she uh, took the reins uh, as the uh, top job in the Southampton Village Police Department and uh, she did so admirably. I believe that she uh, steered the Village Police Department in the right direction and I believe that uh, she was everything that this village needed and everything that the department needed at the right time. And uh, I really wanted to personally uh, thank you uh, for your service for all of these years and with many years to come to the village of Southampton and uh, you could not have done a better job uh, stepping into the role that you did uh, and you definitely uh, served the village and its residents well and on behalf of the board of trustees we're all greatly appreciative for all of your service and greatly appreciative for the service of those who are here today so thank you again. Thank you. So we'll move to the, uh, the second uh, resolution. Um, I just wanted to point out that, that uh, the, when appointing a chief of police, uh, there is a different protocol than with uh, making, making regular appointments. Uh, this is not a mayoral appointment. Uh, this is a board appointment, unlike other positions pursuant to 4 400 So Deputy Mayor, I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you read this one. Thank you. Whereas the position of chief of police is vacant, and whereas there is currently no civil service eligible list for the position of Chief of Police in the Village of Southampton, and whereas the Village is required by applicable law to have a Chief of Police, now therefore be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees hereby indicates its intent to appoint Anthony Carter to the position of Chief of Police on a provisional basis, effective March 13, 2023, after completion of his employment with the County of Suffolk and after taking the open competitive civil service examination for the police chief's position. And be it therefore resolved that this resolution shall be deemed ratified by the Board of Trustees on February 21st, 2023, in order to comply with the civil service requirement that provisional appointments occur within 30 days of the effective date of the provisional appointment and be it further resolved that Chief Carter shall be compensated with an annual salary of $225,000 and additional terms and conditions of employment as set forth, forth in an offer letter from the village administrator dated December 12th, 2023. 22. 22. 22. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I really messed that up. Okay, Do I, uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Discussion. So um, this is not going to come of any surprise to the board here, uh, but uh, I wanted to go through a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to uh, thank the uh, police search committee uh, who uh, helped serve uh, through this process. Uh, and uh, that was chaired by Trustee Robin Brown and uh, Trustee Roy Stevenson was on that search committee, as well as Ed Moneypenny who's here today uh, from our budget and finance committee, as well as Father Mike Vetrano. And uh, there was Reverend Butler who was on that committee as well. Uh, you know, again, as I said, this is not going to come as a surprise, but this is unfortunately uh, not a resolution that I'm going to support, though I will work well uh, with uh, Deputy Commissioner Carter and soon to be Chief Carter, but I just wanted to outline a few reasons why I have a few concerns here. Um, that goes back to Reverend Butler on the uh, police search committee. Uh, I was disappointed uh, that, uh, that he did not uh, participate. Uh, there was a situation where we really needed him involved, uh, not only because he was a religious and community leader, uh, but also because he was a law enforcement professional as well, and I thought that with losing uh, 
Reverend Butler, uh, we lost a good heart of that, uh, that committee. And then on top of that, uh, that committee did not get to see its work through. Uh, that committee was never disbanded by resolution. It just simply uh, didn't have uh, the ability to see that work through. And, and so I was disappointed uh, about that process. Uh, the second thing is that uh, there is a civil service uh, process in place here. And for a year and a half, this board uh, had told the community that uh, we needed a chief of police and we were waiting on a civil service list. But the fact of the matter is, is that there was uh, our own list, but there was also a West Hampton list and there was also a Lloyd Harbor list. And that those lists uh, were available with quali qualified and competent individuals. And uh, I believe that uh, we also had an opportunity to hire somebody sooner than later. And uh, we also had a good opportunity to hire those people. But in addition, uh, we also received resumes after the fact. So uh, we had a closed date for res resume submissions and uh, we got resumes after that. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have an opportunity to see all of those resumes that came after the submission date, uh, but we saw some of those resumes. And I will tell you that there was some extremely prestigious people uh, that came in after the fact that included top NYPD brass, top Suffolk County brass, and top Nassau County brass. And uh, as a result, I, I think that this board could have done a bit better job doing its due diligence in that process. Uh, again, we lost an opportunity to in interview some additional uh, high caliber people there. Um, of more concern is that this job requires that you take a civil service exam and requires uh, that you score in the top three. And this board is taking a very high risk that if, unfortunately, if uh, Deputy Commissioner Carter does not score in the top three or does not pass the exam, he may be out. And I think that that risk is too much for uh, me personally to take. Um, now, there's going to be an exam, obviously, in the, uh, in the spring, but I think that uh, we, we should have made sure that we had uh, a candidate uh, who was on that list, uh, whether it was a promotional list or a, uh, a list that was done um, open competitive, but we had ample opportunity to get people off those lists, and we chose not to. And so I believe that um, this board is taking a calculated risk, but one that, uh, in my calculation, uh, may not uh, turn out okay. The other thing I think that we're missing here is uh, local uh, experience. And um, I think that uh, it's uh, important uh, that if we were going to go this route, we could have uh, found somebody with some local ties. Uh, and, and I think that's also uh, a miss here. Again, I, I do think that Deputy Commissioner Gardner is a man of high professional and integrity, but I think that we believe that. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Detective Sergeant Lamison, um, who has served this village uh, with the highest uh, level of professionalism. Uh, someone that I haven't known for very long, but he's always treated me with a high level of respect and professionalism. And I believe that this village uh, deserves to give him that level of professionalism and respect. And uh, I do not think that he should have been um, included. He should have been included in the process. Now, I make no uh, representations that I would have maybe voted for him or this board would have selected him, but I believe that he at least deserved a chance. And it most certainly doesn't sit right with me that there were many people who were, uh, for whatever reason, uh, disqualified from the exam, but he, unfortunately, was one of the few people that was disqualified that didn't get to take an appeal. And there are many reasons why some people who got to take the exam, uh, who were initially disqualified, got to take it, and that, to me, is extremely, extremely disappointing. And I'll, I'll say no more on that topic. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, Council is Trustee, here. Trustee Brown, I'm just going to finish up uh, some comments and I'm I will sorry, we'll call on you. Um, another thing that I think is uh, problematic here is that this board made a, uh, a big deal about our prior chief's uh, contract. And uh, we have a contract that was sent to our inbox today at 4.30 p.m. And this is a five-year contract. And I believe that that's troublesome and that this board should have taken more time uh, to negotiate that contract, uh, and uh, particularly in light of what had happened uh, in 2021, uh, and, and therefore uh, I believe that um, that, that, was a, that was problematic. Um, and lastly, I do believe that this meeting was, was called as a special meeting, but there was no reason that this could have been uh, rushed. I believe that uh, when I campaigned in 2019 to run for this office, I campaigned on a platform of transparency, and the fact that this was noticed out um, at uh, 10 p.m. on Thursday night when we could have given the public a week's notice uh, and, and done so in a more uh, a transparent manner uh, by using some of the best practices 
I believe that would have been a better uh, course of action. So uh, I'll conclude by um, you know, stating a, a quote that, that I believe uh, is, is, is um, true to me. And, and uh, again, I don't want to, uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll be willing to work with anybody in this position, but I wanted to state my uh, objections to this, to this process. Again, this is a board appointment. This is not a mayoral appointment. And so I get one vote, just like everyone else in this board. And, uh, and, uh, and I hope that uh, that, uh, that could be obviously recognized. So I'll conclude with this, uh, this quote here. And uh, it, it says that there's one thing that doesn't abide by majority rule, and that is a person's conscience. All along, my conscience has been my guide. But voting my conscience does not require courage. It simply requires doing what I know to be right. And uh, that's a quote that, uh, that I believe very strongly in. And um, again, uh, looking forward to uh, working. I, I'm excited about this tonight, but uh, I wanted to make sure those uh, uh, remarks were on the record. So thank you. Trustee Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to be clear, and council can correct me if I'm wrong, that it was an open competitive test, council? Was it an open competitive test? That's correct. Which means that no one is um, declined from taking the exam. And it was also emails were sent, and it was all agreed upon at the level of what the uh, we were looking for for the talent, starting at lieutenant, that all agreed upon that. So perhaps that was an oversight. I just wanted to be clear about that on the record. Once again, this is a joyous occasion. We congratulate you all, and thank you for giving me the time to make things clear. Thank you. Jesse, did you open this up for an open discussion or for just you to talk? Is this open for people to talk or just you? Appreciate the question. Unfortunately, there's no uh, public comment this evening. I, I make a motion to do that resolution. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is truly an honor to be standing here before all of you. There are so many people that I want to thank for helping to make this happen. First and foremost, I would like to thank my family. In attendance today are my mom and dad. They've always been here and always been by my side. Also here are my wife and my, my three children, uh, who know all too well in the position of law enforcement of all the missed holidays, uh, the long weekends, the, the missed family events, uh, just all too often. And being here tonight for me, I, I really appreciate it and I can't thank you enough. I would also like to thank the police commissioner of Suffolk County, Rodney K. Harrison, for bringing me to the Suffolk County Police Department as his deputy police commissioner. I also want to thank the county executive, Stephen Ballone, and his deputy chief deputy, Lisa Black, for supporting me in working with the people in Suffolk County and working with the Suffolk County Police Department. Furthermore, I want to thank both of them for their support of not only law enforcement in Suffolk County, but throughout the entire nation. To the Board of Trustees, Gina Aresta, Robin Brown, Roy Stevenson, Bill Manger, I want to thank you for having the confidence in me to get the job done and I know we will. I also want to thank the village administrator, Cheryl Cagle-Betts. Charlene, Charlene, I always say that. And the, and the uh, village attorney, Vincent Toomey, for their work in getting me to this point and this stage uh, here. So thank you very much. I also want to thank Mayor Jesse Warren, uh, for his leadership and I know going forward we're going to do great things and we're going to do them together. This will be my third 
police department that I've served. And I feel that it is perhaps the most exciting time in my 28 year career that I am so proud to be associated with the men and women of the Southampton Village Police Department. And I thank all of you for showing up tonight to support me. I really appreciate it. Although I haven't met any of you yet, I did have the opportunity to meet newly appointed Captain Sue Hertau. So just a round of applause for her again. I am very excited to have the opportunity to work with you, so thank you. Community engagement is very important to me. I am eager to get out there to meet the community, meet the residents, and talk about some of the problems that are occurring in this village. I look forward to solving these problems together. The village will have access to me. I will be out there on the streets often so that I can meet the community and really take a look at what we need to do to solve the problems, come up with innovative and new strategies. My, my sincere thanks to all of you again, and thank you. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Stand by. We have to swear in. Okay. No, not that. Okay. Disregard. Alright, thanks, Kathy. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.